Hi, I'm uh, John Baker, and I'm uh, president of client services at JWT New York. And just came off a panel sponsored by Vizu, talking about how uh, brand dollars are moving uh, moving online and and what we need to do to make that happen more. Um, it's great of Vizu to bring us together because uh, you know having Paul Gunning, who's uh, CEO of Tribal, on the panel, and and Carl from Digitas, you really get a good mix of uh, perspectives. Uh, but amazed to see how much everyone is actually uh, in agreement um, that it's less about the channel and more about the big you know having a, an idea uh, that solves business problems. That's what gets really exciting. The world has gotten incredibly uh, complex and there's a, a hundred ways to solve each problem. So as an agency, we're starting to say we're more like consultants solving a business problem rather than just saying we need to come up with a single big creative idea. Obviously, the, a creative concept is an important part of that, but it's, it's less... Um, it's, it extends beyond that. It extends to, you know, what media, what how the media work together, what's the full ecosystem, how to use social. All of this is what uh, what makes it work. What were some of the things that the other two agency executives were talking about that you kind of were like, yeah, we're in the same boat? And what were some things that maybe were, where the three companies diverge? Well. Um, I think where we're in the same boat was uh, wanting to decouple um, ideas from channels. So uh, Paul talked about um, kind of getting out early and talking to different media publishers because you know a, a, an idea like a, a monopoly game can can come from uh, working closely with a specific publisher. Um, and Carl said the same that uh, you know that that rather than sort of receiving a plan, a media plan based on last year, it's power. It's more powerful if if everyone is saying you know for one or two campaigns a year what's the business problem and and how can we really throw everything up in the air to come up with something that's innovative and different and of course we're doing that at JWT all the time so so do you have a specific case study with a client that kind of illustrates that um, well I mean one of the, the the ones that we talk about quite a bit which um, was uh, incredibly effective was uh, actually a Microsoft campaign um, about reaching uh, you know C CTOs and technical experts CIOs um, and realizing that you know straight up claims have limited effect so how do you uh, whereas there is a, a huge demand in those technical um, communities for specific technical information relating to specific problems that they're either uh, having or trying to solve or that they see in the news. Um, in this case, what we did is we, um, we sort of used a tool we call brand journalism, which is taking actual journalists to interview within uh, the technical community and within the client community to find specific uh, messages, specific facts, uh, specific examples of, of uh, material that exists, and then effectively publishing that out across paid, earned, and known media. So um, now all of a sudden, uh, suddenly, uh, with a media agency, we're, we're actually creating content pieces that look like um, uh, that look like content. Uh, so we're creating ad units that look like content, putting in top headlines that are relevant to, say, a news story that's only broken in the last 24 hours. Um, it really changes the way everyone works together. And surprise, surprise, the relevancy, the good value content, uh, the tech community talking to the tech community, it works. Um, but I, I, would, I would actually I'd take you to a different, uh, a slightly different category. I mean, one, it helps if, if the brand is in a high consideration space, but it doesn't have to be a big brand like Microsoft, which does, in fact, own media channels and has their developer network and the like. It could also be a financial services brand like T. Rowe Price, um, where, you know, the, the, you know, the thinking there is how do you demonstrate intellectual prowess? How do you demonstrate um, that T. Rowe Price really does understand the connected world? Um, there's no doubt that there's a task around allowing people to encouraging people to choose a T. Rowe Price uh, mutual fund over one of their competitors but there's a second one which is do people believe T. Rowe Price is a better company and that becomes a brand challenge now uh, and you know using this sort of brand journalism technique can work there now remember again reaching a broad audience of people that want to are in the mindset of thinking about thought leadership so think TED or Economist instead of Morningstar and Financial Times, um, you know, uh, analysis uh, mutual funds page. Um, when you do that, 
the brand needs content partners. So the way that uh, that occurs is the brand wants to create content that's valuable, that demonstrates its, its knowledge, but it wants to do that in partnership with the Harvard Business Review and with, in partnership with The Economist and, and other uh, content publishers because the content publishers have a strong audience and um, you know, provide a, a really nice f uh, format or vehicle for the brand to also contribute and, and, and uh, provide that content. As a creative guy, uh, what do you want to be saying to the, how do you want to be working with the publishing community? So um, clearly, I mean, th think of the spectrum. Uh, and we'll go to the, the worst end of the spectrum, which is buying inventory through an ad exchange. There's absolutely no relationship between a creative agency and the publisher. Um, and the ad unit shows it has to be a standard format um, and it has to run. On the other extreme, and I think where we'd like to be making our mark, particularly as JWT, is saying, how do you create um, an event that, that will then demonstrate the brand different. So we do a lot of thinking about what's the brand campaign, why will this work in the market, why will this make a brand stand out against its competitors. The other end of the extreme is forming up an event that yes includes ad inventory units, but it's probably more likely to also take that media brand out into other paid media. So um, an example of that might be uh, the Nightlife Exchange, where you're hosting a huge party. And in a given location, that might be in conjunction with a, a publishing partner that helps promote an awareness of it. But then the brand, Smirnoff, is actually buying media, promoting a co-branded event, effectively. So I mean, it really is about partnership. Because as soon as you go multi-channel, uh, your both brands are going to be showing up and it's the fact that the two brands are together that makes it more powerful. We have people in the team that are, are completely focused on whether it's the network TV or the big print channel uh, uh, partners. We probably don't do it enough. In fact, it's sort of funny the disconnect between the creative agency who's making a product for its clients that will run in these environments um, and the fact that we don't talk more. Uh, I think digital has the opportunity to do it more because the ad unit can change. Um, you know, it, uh, there's so much more flexibility about the kind of thing you can do that it brings us together because the, the ideation and the coming up with the, the, the campaign will be stronger if we've got the ideas coming from a, a publisher as well. I recognize how, how hard it is for the publishers because when you go to a media company, there's a clear media dollars available to be spent and it's and it's a simple sell if you like when you're coming into a creative agency it can be frustrating because you know we we ourselves also find it frustrating how hard it is to get ideas from the yeah, inception to live um, and that's a long process inside creative agencies so um, so the answer is we're not talking as much as we'd like um, I think as we start changing our model and doing more brand journalism type things with shorter uh, delivery cycles, um, there'll be more opportunities. Well, one resounding, you know, I think expression you heard from everybody was that video works. Um, and that's video, whether it's TV, video has proven over years, online video, um, video through mobile, video works. It, it engages people, delivers an emotional message, helps build the brand. Um, I think the, the thing that was interesting is that there was also a point that uh, say the worst kind of traditional advertising video, so that's a strong claim, not very entertaining, not very engaging, actually is, you know, because we're entering it in a much more measurable medium, is the least effective. So Vizu can tell you by creative unit which uh, ads are having a positive impact on the brand. So give you brand metrics down to individual units and even individual media placements, because of course it's delivered through a digital channel. Um, so you know, all of a sudden, you're starting to get a, a much greater level of measurability, which means we can get smarter about the kind of video we put online. Um, I know personally, um, one of my biggest challenges is that we're not doing as much with interactivity on video. That was one of the messages I made. Um, you know, we have, you know, uh, there's so much video being delivered online, and yet we can't, you know, bring up the five or ten fantastic cases which use, say, branching storylines or interactive hotspots or even really thought about a video as a central unit and all the messaging around it. 
Um, you know, right now, if we were to go into the conference and, and sample five people and ask if they had heard of Double Rainbow, everybody would probably you'd get a high number saying, yep, I'm aware of it, I know what it is, I saw it. That's a piece of linear video. Um, you know, how many people would, could say the same for Samsung uh, Basic Instinct, which was a branching video example? You know? um, and that's just, uh, I'm surprised, and I think that'll change. So the cost is both uh, production cost, but um, you know I think um, you know we're familiar with managing that. I mean that's what we do, and JWT was has been around since 1864, so <laughs> they've got some experience. Um, the um, uh, I think um, there's another cost, which is the fact that it's it's a more difficult project. So as you and, and it, by definition, it's likely to involve a greater number of people, both on the client side, on the inside the creative agency, and within the media partners and, and other other agencies. And so, when you or, or technical um, partners as well. And when you do that, um, the the management of getting it from idea to live is much harder. And so, as a result, I think that's one of the reasons why we don't see more of it. Uh, do, do you have a good example of any sort of interesting interactive video initiatives you've done? Um, well, we have, um, you know, we've, we've used a lot of video components in, say, for example, the Microsoft campaign where we were, whether it's organizing a round table of technical people in front of their webcams, basically, but then using that as an ad unit. Um, if you think about, uh, you know, within our, our stride work, which is uh, heavily driven by, by social media, there's a lot of sort of generating the idea out of social media. Um, but again, that video tends to be linear um, A, to, a to B, if you like. Um, yeah, it's, as I say, it's a little bit of a source of frustration. I think, you know, as an agency uh, at JWT, we should be not only pioneers, but the very best at doing strong interactive video ex executions. So, you know, we, we've got to crack this, and we will crack it. Last question. Uh, what are some of the kind of the cool technology companies that you know, I'm thinking in terms of digital and online video or even just online advertising in general? Like what what companies are you like? They're doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, well, I mean, for a long time, uh, I know Video Egg is rebranded as Say Media. I really liked what they were doing, both um, from using layers and using hotspots, so stop video to explore a subject, come back, resume the video, um, and also rethinking the media engagement model, so pay by engagement rather than paper. Yeah, you know, it's a variant on paper click, but obviously uh, an engagement being a, a different measure, but definitely away from a CPM model. Um, yeah, you know, there's some interesting folks in the UK. Uh, I was just in in, uh, in Europe for the last four years in London. Um, there's some interesting companies doing video tagging, um, you know, which is about being able to identify whether it's individuals, sort of like um, the way that uh, Picasso does face recognition and, and Facebook is working with face recognition, doing that sort of tagging within video. That's quite exciting. Or um, tagging elements of a video so that it's more searchable. Um, that's super interesting. Um, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, there's a real, there's sort of like needs to be the subservient chicken campaign, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Someone, we have to get an idea that gets huge traction, that also shows the entire world what you can do with branching or interactive video. Um, just as subservient chicken did, when people were amazed that you could type into a search box and have a video react to it. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there just haven't been as many campaigns like that. And, you know, whether we do it or Paul does it or Carl does it at Digitas, I'm happy for anyone to do it because we'll all be better for it.